Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Thicker Bell. It's a whole lot of raunchiness, a lot of police action, a lot of black men getting scooped off the streets, and a lot of women putting disgusting things on their mouth. I guess it's usual black news, but hey, welcome back to Thicker Mill Podcast, y'all. Uh, I got something interesting, man. Sexy Red finally drops her disgusting, belligerent, belittling, uh, derogatory lip gloss line. Now, if you don't know, I haven't heard of this uh, lip gloss line that Sexy Red has dropped. It's under her brand called North Side Princess. Yeah, people, North Side Princess. And um, I kind of want to walk you through this because I find it really crazy. Majority of these lip glosses are named after disgusting, derogatory, like, diseases. I don't know how black women endorse Sexy Red for so long because now it's almost a big question. Who the hell is this woman's fan base? So let's get into these damn... Uh, Lip glosses. So yes, this is Sexy Red with the lip gloss, man. She finally drops her lip gloss. And as you can see, it's a Sexy Red brand. This is phase two of the ratchet movement. This is phase two of the big gatekeepers, the big wealthy rich men of the world who sign belligerent trash like this, make millions and millions and millions off it. Now, don't get me wrong. I mess with Sexy Red because she's genuine to herself. But my problem is the demoralization of black people through funding of this type. Now, if I told you, give me a million dollars because I have a plan to ruin the black thought process, would you give me the million dollars or would you say, hmm, why do you want to destroy your own nation, Dre? That's kind of weird, don't you think? But we never question it because this demoralization and this destruction of the nation comes behind a nice 808, a melody, a symphony, some chains, and some booty shaking. But hey, I guess when you do it over music and you can listen to it in a club, you can listen to it when you're drunk. If I told you I want to push a movement that said, uh... F my baby mom, F your baby dad, be single parent, twerk after you just had a baby. Y'all look at me like I was crazy, right? Y'all look at me like I was crazy. So that's my big problem with a lot of these music artists and why out of all the talent in the world, somehow this gets dug up. But I blame black people because black people endorse this kind of behavior. Y'all stream the music, y'all listen to it at the club. Y'all may not go to the shows, but y'all keep them trending online long enough to stay relevant. So Sexy Red Post is introducing Northside Princess. The brand and my first product will be my lip gloss. I'm so excited. But for those who don't know, I went back and did my research. Y'all know I'm the research junkie. I'm gonna go look. So I got some old, old videos from Sexy Red. I'm talking about, you know how content creators, when they first be in the car, making their videos and just be talking on the cell phone when they first start. I'm talking about that old with Sexy Red just in the car. Now, she got something called Coochie Juice, Booty Hole Brown Lipstick. She got the Nut Lipstick. I made a whole scenario so y'all can kind of understand what that one was going to be referring to. She got the Pennsylvania Pink. Oh, sorry. That says see hole Pink. My bad. You got the Blue Balls. You got the Sex On My Period. You got the Gonorrhea. And you got the Yellow Discharge. I know what that says. I just want to call it discharge for the sake of the goddamn time. So when my question is who the hell is going to buy this lipstick? I want to know. Because even when I go through some of the comments, people, except this person, claims they have been waiting for this. So this was Sexy Red a long time ago. She looks like, I forget who that platform was, but they would have all the new artists. Um, I don't want to say, I want to say it was... um. DJ Smalls, DJ Small Eyes or something like that, when all the artists who were coming up were going DJ Small Eyes. I, this is that early stage sexy red. This is what it looks like. I got a video from way earlier because apparently she's been promoting this for a long time. I got a lip gloss brand and the names for my lip gloss is something that nobody would have ever thought of. I got one called Nut and it's the color of some nut. I got one called Gonorrhea. It's green like Gonorrhea. I got one called Yellow Discharge. Like how girls be having yellow discharge. Booty hole pink, booty hole brown, coochie juice. And coochie juice is clear with silver glitter. It's cute, like the cute and it smells good. And it's so like, you know, people gonna talk sh but other people was like, you is a marketing genius because it's so, so fast. And it smells good too. I be thinking of all out the box. Sh it's not even on purpose. It's just like my brain helped me think outside the box to do some crazy sh Whoever called her a marketing genius, can you please send me a DM so we can have a very lengthy conversation on your marketing um, abilities and your level of marketing? I would generally love to have a conversation with a person who calls Sexy Red a marketing genius. And you're right, Sexy Red. No one would have ever thought of this because it's just utterly disgusting. And your fan base, which I would like to assume are a bunch of young little girls or a bunch of older girls who still think that they're young, listen to your music. So when you say 
No one expected this. You were absolutely right. Anyone who has a sane brain. But the marketing genius who thought this was a good idea to start a brand uh, and sell lip gloss that's called Coochie Juice, uh, Gonorrhea, Yellow Discharge, Nut, um, Booty Hole Brown, I believe that's what it's called, Please come to the front because we have to address you. Some of the comments are actually uh, funny. This guy said, me after doing my product review on gonorrhea. And it's the it's the gif of the... <laughs> Yo, the internet is an undefeated ass place. A lot of people, you are truly a disgrace, you. Uh, you must be selling this at sex shops because ain't no way. This is something that Spencer's may definitely take. There's a lot of kinky people in this world. But to think about it, I don't think if I went on a date with a woman or let's say my brother or anybody I knew went on a date and um, you see somebody pull out uh, some lipstick before y'all go in or before y'all head back to the crib and it says yellow discharge and you have no idea who sexy red is, you probably will be disgusted and you should probably tell that person you go home and see him later. Or better yet, if you see them pull out a lip gloss that says gonorrhea, I would generally be disgusted. But I'm just not sure how you guys could withstand this and I'm seriously want to know who plans on buying this lip gloss and apparently it gets older I mean we're talking about before sexy red even had two y's in the name this is just sexy this ain't even sexy red with the two y's this is just the regular sexy red I believe she's from St. Louis if I'm not mistaken running around in a car trying to push the product this girl has been true to her character. That is the only reason I can respect Sexy Red because she hasn't so far been one of those people. I mean, the girl dropped the baby and started twerking postpartum. Half fat bitch, eat a big black cock because I like sex on my period, okay? And for you hoes talking shit, y'all the ones that got yellow discharge. I made this for y'all so y'all can feel okay. And don't y'all got down the real. Half fat bitch. So now we know a lot about Sexy Red. See, I blame y'all because y'all made her famous. Y'all made her lit. Y'all didn't make her famous. Let me take that back. They pushed the button and y'all were receptive to the information. So when black people have questions of like, why is this a thing? Why is this relevant? Because nobody has stood up. Now I got to get serious. Nobody has stood up and said, hey, we are not having this. We're not having this. She's not welcome. We're not going to shows. We're not buying no products. We're not streaming no music. You guys didn't stand up and say this is atrocious until it gets to the point where now little kids can go on TikTok because she does have a TikTok for this brand. And what type of content do you think is going to be promoted on that TikTok? On to the next topic. As we are talking about degeneracy and as we are talking about disgrace and almost sad when you think about it mentally... Let's talk about rapper NBA Youngboy. So yes, everybody, NBA Youngboy. NBA Youngboy. So yeah, guys, NBA Youngboy, Quintrell, you guys know NBA Youngboy, man. Um, and if you don't, I will introduce you. NBA Youngboy was one of the originators of this whole pain rap, of this gangster, outspoken, do what I want, the industry movement amongst the young boys. I mean, he's even went up against the likes of Jay Prince Sr. He has never needed anybody. So if you can't tell, I mean, the influence is so real. You even saw John Moran in the comments. Free, uh, shout out young boy. You saw John... <laughs> I mean, so if you don't know, every time John Morant was caught with a gun, the NBA player, he was listening to the NBA young boy. That's how influential he's that's how influential this kid is. He has other 23-year-old multimillionaires ready to crash out when they listen to that 4K train music. But on a serious note, NBA Youngboy is facing up to 10 years in jail for prescription fraud. Now, you may ask yourself, why somebody who is a millionaire, multi-millionaire, multi-platinum record recording artist, probably one of the most listened to artists on YouTube at a time, the kid had YouTube on lock, it was almost like a thing that whenever young, NBA Youngboy drops on YouTube, it shuts down the whole YouTube algorithm. And the kid literally has been on house arrest for a long time, still dropping music, still, still doing numbers from his house in Utah. I mean, I mean, he even put a bunch of light on the city of Utah, which is absolutely insane. But when you wonder, why would a kid, NBA young boy, be facing 10 years? He's already uh, on house arrest for some gun charge stuff, and he does prescription fraud and just seals the whole deal. But let's check out the article, because this makes no sense to me. But we're going to explain why this might happen. So as you can see, man, this is the look of somebody who's been inside for a long time your hair starts growing everything is just growing out right so um nba young boy please entered a, a guilty plea to his 2020 federal gun case and the documents uh, were obtained by double xl on monday august 19th he signed it as government main kentrell galden k 
Kentrell Golden, beneath a statement that reads, I wish to plead guilty to the offense charge to consent to the disposition of the case in the District of Utah in which I am present and to waive trial in the above captioned district. I mean, he literally just pled guilty. It's like there's no point of fighting. I don't know what happened on the back end, but usually somebody would try to fight it. But the the... I guess the decision when they said you can either go to trial or this, it was probably so far, it probably wasn't even worth fighting, he just decided to plead guilty. And this is probably the best option that he would have got if he would have took it to trial and lost. That's just what I think. What then happened, he was involved in a pre in it. he was involved in a prescription fraud case. Prescription fraud case, okay? Uh his guilty plea comes as he still faces a massive prescription fraud case in Utah where he's currently jailed. Back in April, Wabi was arrested as a part of an alleged prescription fraud ring, a fraud ring operating out of Utah. The top rapper faces multiple charges, including procuring or attempted to procure drug prescriptions, identity theft, forgery, possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person pad, a pattern of unlawful activity and possession of other controlled substances. Police claim Youngboy posed as a medical professional and contacted pharmacy to, pre to re request prescriptions. Sorry, y'all. It's super late at night. I've been working all day, so I can't read right now. All while using the real names and birth dates of other people. So back when this first happened, they were saying that he was pretending to be old women to get these uh, prescriptions. Associates of Youngboy's team would then go and pick up the prescriptions. If found guilty, Youngboy could face up to 10 years in prison along with other fines and supervised house arrests. He's smiling. He's smiling as he pleads guilty. This is the system. This is the reverse psychology. Yeah, I know I got to get serious. This is the reverse psychology and the trickery of niggery. This is what they did to make us believe that doing a bid is cool. Only in our neighborhood, in our community, and maybe this goes for others, because I can see this happening, will you get applauded for doing a long bid after you get home but get called a nerd after you graduated college. This is trickery, trickery to niggery. This is what it is when you can smile when you know you're about to go. And mind you, young boy has a bunch of kids, small ones too. He's a dad. And to me, he seemed as, he's a good dad. I've always seen him with his children. They were always around. Women always have a different perspective. So some may say he did nothing for his children. The kid was young, catching these charges. This is what happens. Hip hop often tends to take black trauma and sell it. The trauma of black men are sold in the form of music. They're sold. Black men's trauma is sold as music. The things they've been through, the talent that these young boys have to express their trauma in such melodic forms have been sold as entertainment. I don't know if he owns his masters. I don't know if he owns all of his publishing. I don't know. But that's the problem. Our trauma has been sold to the point where even white boys can relate to it. Mexicans, Asians. His influence is so strong that these kids are little kids talking about I'm Fouke okay, Trey. The influence of these young black artists are so strong, but nobody protects them from their self. We have witnessed mental health on display with this, with this young boy for a long time and nobody's done nothing nobody's done nothing continue to put his music out continue to watch him crash and burn and now he's facing 10 years in prison another fatherless household in the black community why and i always ask people go find me a white sexy red i'll wait and don't bring up justina valentine one that's mainstream not no underground no mainstream It's your boy, Dre. You let me know your thoughts. Once again, I'm gone.